A lot of people are calling for a pullback on Bitcoin and they could be right. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Because if you look at Bitcoin, we are up about 30% in the last month. And if you think about what 30% is on Bitcoin and in altcoins in the last month, you are talking about an increase in market cap of about $270 billion. Now, after you have a run, such a big run uh, in, in a long time, and specifically when you look at the alts, just look at, look at this monthly chart for the number of alts, we could see a pullback. We could see a vicious pullback in Bitcoin. And if you look at what people are calling for, so I've called up some tweets over here. You've got Red Capital, who says that altcoin market cap is showing rejection from its uh, weekly resistance. You've got a lot of people saying that there's going to be a pullback now, which would be a DCA opportunity. You've got Tony Gia, who says, Tony Guinea, who says, this is peak euphoria. He says, Bitcoin is literally at the highs here. I see bullish predictions. Not one single chart takes into consideration a pullback here. I'll position myself short this month. Remember, bulls are always the loudest at the top. You know what to do. He may be right. We could be in this euphoric stage. And if we do get a pullback, the problem is that we could get a 20, 30, or maybe even 35% uh, a pullback. So that's what today is about. We're going to look at whether or not there is a pullback. And I've got some amazing data, which actually shows something really interesting around whether or not we're going to get a pullback. And if we are going to get a pullback, how long it's going to last and how much it's going to go down. So that's what today is about. Let's do it. Look, I know it's not something that we really want to discuss every day, and especially when the markets have been running, but it's responsible to talk about pullbacks, specifically after we have had a month like the one we've had now. As I said, I mean, 31% on Bitcoin in the last month. Since Friday the 13th, we've been, we've, we're up 31% uh, on Bitcoin. That's, that's a huge number. And um, generally, when the market does get euphoric, and I am picking up the signs of euphoria, we are going to get some kind of pullback. But the question is, when does this pullback come? How long does the pullback last? And <clears throat> what should we do when we get this pullback? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, what the hell are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel. We are exploding as a channel. We're growing our subs like a thousand subs a day. Uh, you see, we've also um, given you guys a new widget at the top of the screen, at that top of that screen over there. There it is. Can you see how cool that is? So you can actually watch the show and you can... You can watch the show and watch the, the, your favorite prices. And we've made sure that the prices change really quickly because we know that you guys are adrenaline junkies and you want the prices to move really quickly. So let me know if you like the widget. Also, let me know which tokens we should put in the widget for you guys during the show. And we can actually change them. Can we change them live or is it not possible to change live? Um, yeah, we can change them live. Tomorrow, we'll change them live. tomorrow we'll change it for you guys live. So let me know what you want. Let me know which, which tokens you actually want uh, on 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 uh, in this uh, in these widgets over here. It's not a ticker; it's a widget. A ticker runs on the bottom of the screen. This one we made sure because too many people were were trying to watch the charts and the show at the same time, and I was like, "Hold on a second, no, we, we got to change this." So listen, let's go. Uh, if you haven't already, smash the like button, obliterate the like button. If you haven't already given us your prediction here in the banter bubbles under the winner Bitcoin competition. Remember to give us your, your prediction here. I see the predictions. You remember, but if you don't have an exchange account, you can't win the Bitcoin. You gotta have an exchange account using a crypto banter link. You can use any one of our exchanges, BitKit, Bybit, CoinW, OKX. If you don't already have an account, what you can do is you can click here and you can get the sign up bonuses. Every account gives you five guesses, one guess a week before the end of the year. And the person closest to the price at the end of the year on the, on the first of the first actually wins the Bitcoin. Here are a distribution of the predictions. Go and put your predictions in now. At the end of the show, we'll, look at, we'll actually look at your predictions. All right, let's have some fun. Let's talk about why people are talking about a pullback. Should we be worried? You know, I'm the perma bull. And um, yesterday I made a, a show for you guys um, where we spoke about you know, our strategy in this bull market. And I warned you guys that there may be some pullbacks and we may actually be getting one of the pullbacks now because I think Bitcoin is doing an amazing job defending this 34,700 level. I saw this, this little meme and this is exactly how Bitcoin is defending the support. But no jokes, I wanna show, show you a chart and I want you to tell me what chart this actually is and which way this chart's actually gonna go. So here's the chart. So that's the chart. 
Tell me, where does this chart go next? Tell me in the chat, where does this chart go next? So you can see what's happened is you've come from the highs, you've got a, 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 a lower high, another lower high, you've got a lower high here. Where does this chart go next? Where does this chart go when this trend line is actually broken? That's what I, I, I want to know from you guys. And then I'll show you which chart this actually is that's about to break out. And I think you'll be quite uh, surprised. Someone says it's Casper. It's not, it's not Casper. Someone says it goes up. It goes up. So Dog says it goes up. Benny K says it goes up. Uh, Daniel Fro says it's gone up. Um, MT, MD says US dollar. Everyone says it's, go, it's going to go up. And I think the problem is, the problem here is I think you're actually right. So what is this chart that we're actually looking at? What is the chart that we're actually looking at? It is the Bitcoin chart, but all I've done is I've gone here and I've inverted the scale. So it, when you invert the scale, up is down and down is up. So you can see like the 34,000. And what you can see is that if Bitcoin breaks through this level over here, then we'll probably get another move down. And right now, it's very, very, very much on that trend line. So as, as you can see, what I did was I took the Bitcoin chart and I just inverted it to show you some perspective of what this chart actually looks like on the way up. Now, as Ice Boy says, this one goes up only, sir. And up here actually means it's going to go down. So if Bitcoin breaks this resistance over here, the, this, this, uh, this was, well, it's, it's, it's a support over here, a resistance over here. It will go straight through and then we'll actually start, we'll actually get Bitcoin going down. Because remember what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the inverted chart of Bitcoin. I love using the inverted charts because what they do is they eliminate your bias completely. If you want a token to go up, you know, you're going to start arguing as to how this is actually bouncing off the line. But if you invert it, it completely eliminates your bias. And now you're kind of saying, look, I want this thing to, because we're all optimists naturally, we want this thing to break through. And now you can see if it does break through, actually Bitcoin starts going down. So the first sign of trouble that we have is we actually have the sign of trouble that we are looking at Bitcoin on this time frame, And if Bitcoin does break down, just on, a, on the pure charts, we could get a little bit of a breakdown. But that's not the only sign that we're about to get a, a, a bullback. We are seeing euphoria. And I, I agree with Tony here. If I look at my timeline, there's only bullish chart predictions. Bitcoin has gone up very, very, very quickly this month. We've had $200 billion in market cap added this month. We've had 30% up in Bitcoin in, in, in one month. Here it is for those, for those of you who missed it. There it is. So we are getting slight euphoria. We're getting, um, we're getting uh, uh, not all the charts that I've seen, seen on Twitter. And I think let's just, for fun, let's just play a game and go onto my Twitter and let's see what the chartists are saying. Literally, I'm on my Twitter. This is the first, we're loading up a random page on Twitter. Let's quickly look at the, let's click on it here. And let's just have a look here to see. How, what people are saying. I'm sure for sure we'll get a few charts very, very, very soon. Will we? I mean, here we go. Okay, Gareth charting. Uh, four, four hour RSI map by Dan Crypto. Generally, uh, today, the whole day, I've been looking at the charts and all the charts have been completely euphoric. And, and so I agree with Tony that everyone's charts are, are super euphoric. I'm also starting to get a lot more of these messages from friends, from friends of friends, from friends of friends of friends. So here's another one that said, he also asked if you could message, if he could message you on WhatsApp, he wants info and a little guidance on portfolios. So this is like a friend of a friend. So like, I don't even know the guy, but it's a friend of a friend. And he's now asking, can he get an introduction to me on WhatsApp because he wants his coins? Now that usually happens in the euphoria time. I showed you this tweet yesterday, friend of, this is a friend, not, not a friend of a friend. This is a friend, one, one, one person closer. Um, so, you know what I'm noticing? When I'm on this view, this now this widget's cutting off my head. I don't, I don't know if you noticed it. Um, so what you can see is you can see that friends are getting euphoric and they're starting to want to get into the bull, the bull market. Now, who are these people that are trying to get into the bull market? These are tourists. These are people that in the bull market, when all the hard work had to be done, they weren't here. They left the, bull mar the, the bear market to us. They left us buying at these levels over here. We were working hard, hard, hard in this whole period over here, accumulating tokens, uh, positioning ourselves for the bull market. They are arriving once we have missed, once they have missed 
the whole climb that we've capitalized on, which is 124% in Bitcoin, and who, who knows how much on the alts. In fact, I'll show you in a second how much on the alts. And now what they want is what they want is they want to to come into the race and they want the small caps because what they're saying is look, we don't we, not only do we want to come but we want to come straight into the main act. It's like come, going to a UFC fight and saying, look, I don't want to do or support the, the small fights. I want to go to the directly, directly, directly. I want to go to the big fight. I want to go directly to the, to the main fight. They don't want to invest in Bitcoin. They don't want to invest in altcoins. They don't want to invest in Solana. They, they want to go directly to, the, to become the millionaires, 5, 10, 15 million market cap that they can go to make the, the 100Xs and the 200Xs and the 300Xs. It's very similar to this meme that Kyle posted. The, <laughs> they just want to... <laughs> Oh, we, better, we, we better turn down the music because you know that you'll, we'll get YouTube tracks. But it's exactly that's exactly them. So that is the people that are coming into into this this bull market right now. They haven't done any of the hard work. Let me switch this off because it's it's actually making a noise. So the, they're the people that haven't done the hard work. And now what they want is they want the big trades. They want they want the five, ten, fifteen, twenty million. Now I saw this. I don't know about you, but I just can't stop laughing at this fucking meme, okay? So I'm going to show it to you guys. It's so good. It, it's a 10 out of 10 meme, okay? <laughs> this is exactly who the people are that are coming into the market now, okay? Watch this. I can't stop laughing There's at like this. a couple things you're going to need to know yep. when you're on a farm. A couple yep. safety tips, like, um, like if you come to this fence over here. Yep. This one. Ah, yeah. oh, fuck. It's electric. You're not supposed to touch it. You don't touch it because why it's electrified. Why did you say that? I was getting into it and you grabbed the fence. I pointed at the fence. The fence can't it's be that bad. It's yeah, electrocuted. It the cows oh, in. it's electric. He's just from New Zealand. He's a pussy. No, it keeps the cows in. You think I'm not tougher than a cow? Yes. Cow bung the baby. <laughs> Fire! What the fuck is that? Pikachu's in that fence, bro. Fucking. That's for bulls, actually. The bull fence, more specifically. Nah, I think I've got a bad current. Let me try again. Don't try again. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> Stop, you're gonna go. Woo! Crazy. Guys, a fucking rush. Try it again, Jimmy. Don't Try it again. Don't, 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 and they want to take leverage and they want to make 100 and 200 X's and <laughs> fucking retarded, bro. They, just, they come into the market, they get burnt, they get flushed out, they come in. That's who these people are. That's the tourists that are actually coming into the market now. So that's why I say there may be a little bit of, I can't stop laughing at that meme. Should we watch it again? Okay, let's watch it again. Come on, I mean, we live once. Let, let, let's watch the meme again. It's very funny. No, yep. when you're on a farm, it's, funny this, it's actually it's funnier like, um, the second time. Like it's funnier the second time. Over here. Yep. This one. Ah, yeah. oh, fuck. It's a you're not supposed to touch it. Don't touch it because it's electric. Just think that these are the DJs coming in, the tourists coming in to trade leverage, okay? <laughs> just, just to think of Why did you say that? I was getting into it and you grabbed the fence. I pointed at the fence. The fence can't Did be you? that bad. It's yeah, electrocuted. It the cows oh, in. it's electric. He's just from New Zealand. He's a pussy. No, it keeps the cows in. You think I'm not tougher than a cow? Yes. Cow bung the baby. <laughs> Fire! What the <laughs> fuck is that? Pikachu's <laughs> in that fence, bro. <laughs> fucking. That's for bulls, actually. The bull fence, more specifically. Nah, I think I've got a bad current. Let me try again. Don't try again. Don't man. touch it. Don't touch just it. Just think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, you're gonna go. Woo! Crazy. Guys, a fucking rush. Try it again, Jimmy. Don't Try it again. Don't, 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 Exactly. So these are the guys. That, these are the the guys that are coming in. The euphoric people who are coming here and they want to try and make ten x's. And that's why I said we may actually be getting some some euphoria in, in the market. That's the first sign. The second sign is I'm seeing something here, which which is another little warning sign. The warning sign is if I look on the one week and I look at the RSI's, which is the sentiment indicator, the relative strength indicator, the momentum indicator. What you can see is that the RSI's on the one week are pretty high. You can see like Rune is, is near the top, Solana is near the top. 
which means that at some point we would need to get some kind of RSI reset. We're also getting the RSI's high on Bitcoin. Now we spoke about this yesterday. There's two ways that this can play on Bitcoin. On the one hand, if we get an RSI above 70, that's a high RSI and we could get an RSI reset. But we have had situations in the past where the RSI breaks above 70 and continues to run and actually pushes Bitcoin with a, with the, with a huge push. So now we are getting into the dangerous territory of high RSI. And the question is, are we going to get this kind of scenario over here where we get a spike? Or are we going to get a retrace of the RSI and with it some kind of pullback on Bitcoin? That's one of the things that we, that we need to be watching, what we need to watch out for. And we'll talk about that in a second. But the chart that is the one that is worrying most people, the one there is one chart out there that is actually worrying most people when it comes to talking about a pullback. And this is where everyone's getting there. It's time for a pullback. It's time for a pullback. It's time for a pullback. This is the, the, the piece of data that everyone's looking at. So the piece of data that they're looking at here is they're looking at the leverage on all coins that are um, that on that excludes Bitcoin. So it's the altcoin leverage. It's how the DGENs are leveraging into altcoins. And what you can see is that this number has spiked pretty quickly from 9.5 billion all the way up to 14 billion. You can see that. And the last time that we had this, we had this once in May over here. So remember we had a little run in May. So we had that in April, sorry. We had the spike go higher than that. And the last time that we saw this was actually before the FTX collapse. So, and that was like, like just after Luna or just before Luna. That's the last time that we had so much leverage being taken out on the altcoins. So that's the chart that everybody's starting to worry about. People are saying, look, if we are getting so much um, uh, leverage being taken out at the moment, then essentially what's going to happen is that the leverage is, is going to need to get flushed out. We know this. I'll show you a few uh, uh, charts in a few seconds. So here it is again. Here is the dominance by open interest. Bear in mind that the blue is Bitcoin. The green is Ethereum and the orange is what they call others. Now, just look at what this chart looks like. Just look at, 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 at how high the leverage is on all the other tokens that are not Bitcoin and Ethereum, which means that what are people doing? It means that because Bitcoin has got strength, we missed Ethereum. And what they went is they went like our friends to the electric friends. And they said, let's just go straight into the leverage of the, of the other altcoins. Let's drive up the open interest. Let's go touch the fence and, 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 and get the, 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 leverage, the leverage up in the altcoins. Now, what's the danger in this chart? Here's the danger in this chart. So the danger zone occurs when OI dominance reaches 34% plus. This is according to 3X Liquidator. He said, my danger occur when the alt open interest dominance reaches 34% plus. That's been a level of historical significance. And what he says is we got to this level today. So there's, in a nutshell, too much leverage, too much leverage in the market. Now you may ask, well, we have actually been watching the leverage and there hasn't been much leverage. So how come all of a sudden there's leverage now? Well, we've been watching Bitcoin leverage. And actually this morning when I saw this chart, I went back to the Bitcoin leverage chart. And what you can see is that even on, up until now, this whole bull market, this whole run, which started on the 13th of October, as you can see, started somewhere around there. All of this, here the shorts got liquidated and then the crypto people were out. And this whole thing was actually led by institutions. What you can see now is that there is a lot of open interest that has been taken out in Bitcoin. Now, this can be people going short or people going long. If it's short and we go up, we get a short squeeze. If it's long, we'll know when the liquidation starts to happen. We'll, as soon as the market takes a move, we'll know exactly which way this, this, uh, the, these liquidations are, are going. So um, someone says here, she says, here are the apes. Here are the apes. Uh, now this price becomes important for two reasons, bottom of the LTF range or large jump and two, a large jump of open interest. So if it's wrong, we'll get hunted. Either the longs are going to get hunted or the shorts are going to get hunted. At the same time, institutional FOMO, institutional buying is at an all-time high. Look at that. Look at the, the CME open interest chart over here. Look at that chart over there. You can see that the CME open interest is just getting higher and higher and higher, which means that the institutions are just starting to ape in to this. What does it mean? Well, pretty simply, what it means is that every time we get an open interest spike, we get a flush. 
don't know how many of you remember this from the last bull market, but most of the pullbacks were actually pullbacks because of high open interest. And again, I'm reminding you, look at the open interest. Look at our open interest right now. Here it is. That's the open interest in the altcoins. That's the increase in the open interest in the altcoins. It's doubled. If you get an increase in open interest, usually there's a spike. Every time there's been a spike, there's some kind of flush. Every time there's a spike over here, there's some kind of flush. Spike, some kind of flush. It happens, it happens every single time. We're back to that market that we went that that we were on. Now look, this can carry on for a while. We could get a scenario that looks like this scenario over here. Let's go here. Like these scenarios over here, where the, the RSI is heated, people take more and more leverage, and we inflict mass pain on the people that are, are short. We inflict max pain on them. Or we could get a quick correction and then we carry on with our, with, our, with our bull market. But be that as it may, what you can see here is that every time that there is a spike, there is uh, some kind of, of reversal pattern. Someone says, look, let's take lessons from, gold, from the gold ETF. Um, speculators were rushing in ahead of the anticipated surge in demand as they rushed in um, as they rushed in of the, ahead of the Bitto approval, this is we're talking about Bitto, the same dynamic occurred when gold was finally authorized uh, public ownership in 1975. Gold prices tanked from $186 per ounce to $110 before they went up. So that's what people are worried about here. Um, if that did happen, we would probably get the altcoins dumping much harder because as I showed you, the majority of this open interest actually came from altcoins. So what we do is we get the altcoins dumping much harder, in which case Benjamin Khan's right. And he's, he's going back and he's saying, look, he keeps saying that the Bitcoin dominance is going to continue to go up. And now we've had a pullback in Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance. We've had Bitcoin dominance go from 54.5 to 52.5. And, and he's saying, look, we, this is about to change. He says, I guess it's time to defend my Bitcoin dominance views again. Please note the dominance. We just had 10 green weeks in a row of 49. The pullback so far has not even retraced the dominance made in its 10th week. Let's actually quickly get a, a, a BTC.D chart. BTC.D. Let's actually go to the weekly so we can follow Ben's, Ben's logic here. Um, okay, here is your weekly. He's right. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The pullback has not even erased the one week increase. Again, I'm not too worried about dominance because I think Miles broke it down very, very well. He said if Bitcoin price is going up and, uh, and Bitcoin dominance is going up, I think he's wrong. If Bitcoin dominance is going up and Bitcoin price is going up, then, then we're okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with dominance going up if price continues to go up. I'm okay with that because then it just means that it carries the alts with it. <clears throat> So look, that's the thesis for the correction. That's the thesis for the correction. We will get a correction. It might come this week, it might come next week, it might come in 10 weeks. We are getting a correction. That's, that's the reality of it because that's what happens in these, in these bull markets. In these bull markets, we are used to getting corrections. Generally, you get <clears throat> in a cycle that did 2,300%. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, six pullbacks that are over 30% and a one that, that's just under 30%. In a cycle that did uh, from 4,000 to, uh, to, so did to 69,000. So you're talking about 20x on Bitcoin. You had a 20%, a 17%, a 31%, a 26%, and an 18% correction. So we're going, to expect, we're going to expect corrections. The question is, when this correction comes, when this bull back, bull back comes, what are we going to do? What is the strategy? How do we play the pullback? So I made it very simple for you guys. Um, we stick to our thesis. What is our thesis? Let's just quickly recap what our thesis is because when we get to the pullback, I want you to remind yourself because the pullback is going to come. When the pullback comes, I want you to remind yourself of a, the, a few things. The first thing is these things are expected. You're going to get five to six pullbacks in this bull market and the pullbacks are going to be anywhere between 20 and 35%. When they happen, don't worry. Number two, our thesis is that we are in the beginning stages of the bull market, we are about 280 days in. We have about 600 days left. In fact, I tweeted this morning and I said, we have 599 days left in this bull market. Make sure that you use the 599 days wisely. You 
up until now in the bear market, it was okay to take your eye off the ball. And even in the beginning of the bull market, the beginning stage of the bull market, it's okay to take your eye off the ball. You know why? In the bear market, you probably missed nothing. If you took a week off, you took two weeks off, who gives a shit? You didn't miss anything. In the beginning of the bull market, usually the beginning of the bull market is very much a, a warm up to, to the next part of the bull market. So you can see in all the previous bull markets, the beginning of the bull markets are actually very flat. And the last part is the part that goes parabolic. You can argue that we've had the first 300 days and we've had the flat part. The next 599 days are the important ones. The next 599 days are the ones where you have to be very, 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 very focused. And so you can't drop, your, you can't drop the ball in the next 599 days because every day is actually much more valuable than the days in the bear market and, and, and the time before. Make sure that you're maximizing now. What does maximizing actually mean? Number one, stick to the thesis. Thesis is we're in a bull market. Until it's invalidated, and we'll tell you when we think it's invalidated, that is our thesis. In a bull market, five to six, in, in this bull market, five to six different corrections, each one of them 18, 15 to 30 percent uh, are down. If that's invalidated, we'll let you know. We, in this bull market, we continue to follow our strategy. What is the strategy? Our strategy is up 42.5% in this month. What is the strategy? 80% of our money goes into our ETF portfolio or your version of the ETF portfolio. By the way, I'm not sure how many of you watched the show yesterday. We spoke about two tokens. We spoke about Arweave and we spoke about Kujira. Look at those, the performance of Arweave and Kujira. Kujira, well, yesterday I think it was 168 when we spoke about it. Our weave was in the six dollars. It went up to seven dollars eighty today, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around it. Went to seven sixty today. So, doing very well if you're holding those. If you're holding those tokens, eighty percent of our tokens are in the ETF. Twenty percent is for trading and small bets on tokens that can explode your portfolio. Well, you've you've all watched that video. If not, I'll leave a link to the video which explains our strategy um, uh, uh, below. We are seeing amazing signs that that tell us that, that this bull market is here. The first sign that I saw today was the, the change in stable coins. We've had about $11 billion in stable coins flow into the market. So the thesis remains that we are in this raging bull market. We are, you can see this, the, the small part of the market, the, the flat part of the market has, has, is almost ending and we've just broken up, which is exactly our thesis. And then we're going to get into the parabolic uh, the parabolic run in, 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 in this bull market. This cycle is exactly the same as every other cycle. The whales are still buying. They're taking, their, they're taking the last opportunity before the breakout to continue to buy. And even more so, if you look at the total supply in loss held by long-term holders, we are playing out exactly as per previous cycles. Exactly, look at that. Exactly as previous cycles before the parabolic rise. So, so far, this cycle plays exactly the same. What do we do in these situations? We appreciate that every single pullback is actually a bullback. And in bullbacks, what you do is you use the opportunity to dollar cost average into the narratives that either you've left out or the narratives that you need more in your portfolio. So I saw this tweet over here and it was a great tweet because I'll show you in a second why. It says, I added to my blur position on this pullback Great reaction from Alt so far. The reason why I think it's such a good tweet is because you know that when I was trading, I had, a, I had two problems in my portfolio. The first problem in my portfolio was my Arbitrum position. Um, let me see if I can let me just scroll up for you guys. So my first problem in this portfolio was the Arbitrum position. It's, it's working according to plan. I obviously bought more Arbitrum to try and average down, which is exactly what happened. I'm doing this obviously on Bybit. I'm on 10x leverage. Yeah? And my blur position, remember I rode blur all the way down to here. I mean, I bought it here. I bought it somewhere there. And I rode it all the way down to here. Imagine how painful that was. And I was down a lot. And what I thought is, I thought of the following thesis. I thought, hold on a second. When the market turns, everything is going to turn. And the last thing that's going to turn in the market is going to be the NFTs. Because generally, what's, what's going to happen is there's going to the liquidity is going to go into Bitcoin. I thought it was going to flow into ETH. It didn't flow into ETH. It flowed straight into the major altcoins. Then when there is liquidity, where do people go? The people went to the NFTs. And that's exactly what is playing out now. So what you can see is that as the liquidity came back, the NFT market, the volume for the past five weeks has, has been steadily increasing 
here's the numbers. So on October 9th, 30, then 36, then 47, then 56, then 68 um, ETH in terms of NFT volume. So you can see that as the money comes back, the water in, the, in NFT land starts to rise. And you can see that if you look at your timeline and the same as my timeline, we're starting to get a lot of sales of NFTs. So what do we know? We know that you can see a lot of these sales of, of NFTs. So if someone says, someone makes a big NFT sale, my entire timeline is exactly the same. Everyone's talking about the same NFT sale. So we've learned two things in the, the past cycle. If you want to know when the pullbacks are coming, watch Pepe, Pepe the coin. When Pepe rises, when Pepe starts running, you know that people are just starting to throw money at stupid things. And NFTs, exactly the same thesis. And that's why I was expecting my blurb. That's why I didn't cut the blurb position. In fact, I added to the blur position. I got 250,000 blur. It's a hundred and it's a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar, hundred and thirteen thousand dollar position. It's still down, but it's clawing its way back up. Now, my other trades are still doing very well. So you can see the other trades. Let's see if we can quickly. I don't know why. Let's quickly kill that. And so you can see all the other trades are doing well. Not all. One of them is not doing very well. So my Stargate trade is, was amazing. It was a sixty cents earlier today. Up, it was about, up about $60,000. My sole trade, taking $58,000 in profit, there's $146,000 still to take. My rune trade, taking $34,000 in profit, still $153,000 to take. Near, I'm down $19,000. I'm waiting a little bit longer on the near um, uh, conference before I make any decisions there. My GMX trade, I'm waiting for derivatives to pick up, um, volumes to pick up and volatility to pick up, and then I think this GMX position is going to fly. Doge is Doge. Doge, people are going to come into my blur trade, you've spoken about my Bitcoin trade, obviously very far up. So, so far, I'm comfortable with my trades. I'm sticking to my thesis. I'm sticking to my thesis. And that's exactly what you need to do when, when, um, when, when this happens. So what is our thesis? We, in the beginning of a bull market, we are going to hold 80% of our tokens in a stable portfolio. We're going to take 20% and take small bets and hold them forever to see what happens. We also have a thesis that ETH is going to start running. And Sheldon did a whole show around ETH. I don't know if you guys want to watch it, go and watch it. But you can see that a lot of people are actually picking up the ETH trade that we took yesterday. So yesterday we bought ETH options, or some of us landed up buying ETH options. You see, I bought 10 ETH options. I paid about $310. They're now worth $290. Um, but it doesn't matter. We've got the Deribit competition that's happening now. No, just by the way, in this Deribit competition, we have Crypto Banter actually has the biggest team. And you can still join our team. So just go and sign up for the competition. There are links below. Very important that you have to register your account on, on Signal Plus and connect the API if you want to participate in the competition. There's instructions below. You will, we'll add instructions for you guys below. Um, and then you have to take the trades through Signal, Signal Plus. So I think the trades that I took, I actually I took them in Deribit, so I'm going to have to retake them on Signal Plus, which I, which I will do tomorrow. So if you want to join us in the competition, remember, if you do join us, not only do you get a free option, but you also get $50 when you sign up. So it's pretty much like you've got money to, to participate for free. Right now, we're the biggest team. And I think that we can, we can actually win this competition. So let's, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's our thesis. Um, that's our thesis. That's why I was holding on to the NFTs. At some point, I'm still going to hold. Um, let's look at a couple of other things. So um, we do have, if you look at the bubbles today, we saw, I saw the ton, which is Telegram which is the Telegram wallet. Here it is. Or well, the Telegram token. Ton, where is it? Uh, <clears throat> Let's quickly go to... Uh, I'm, on the, I'm on the monthly. Let's go on the daily. So I saw earlier today that Ton actually had a run. Let's see where it is. Okay, it's down now, but it was up actually up earlier. The reason why it was up is because they do have an event on the 10th and 11th of uh, November. You've got Ripple with their event, 8th and 9th. So Ripple ob obviously also going to pump. You remember, in the bull market, you got to watch these things. You've got to keep watching these things here. So that is the announcements. Um, I want to show you a crazy story, actually, in a second. I want to show you a crazy story in a second. I think just important that we look at this. But um, this is the exchange market share as per report that was done. And you can see that Binance's market share has actually dropped from 50, from 60% to 52%. Uh, in, in the spot. That's actually an amazing, amazing, amazing thing because what we want is we want the industry to become less reliant on Binance. So healthy signs, healthy, 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 healthy signs from the industry. They're saying Binance has lost one third of its spot market share this past year, which is good. We want that. Not, not because we don't like Binance. We love Binance, but we just don't want one single point of failure. Um, 
also want to show you something crazy. So get this story. And, 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 and like, this is one of the craziest stories I've ever seen. There is a guy who bought, let me show you. This is, this is absolutely crazy. He has $470 million worth of Ethereum, but he's lost his private key. No kidding. There's a guy, his name is Rain Lomas, the founder of LVH Bank. He says he has not made much effort to recover the funds, but he's willing to pay someone to help him recover the funds. He has been revealed as being the owner of a $250,000 Ether wallet bought during the ICO, which is now worth $500 million, half a billion dollars. And um, he's been asking people to try and help him. So he says, one of the mysteries solved, this address, which holds 450 million, belong, belongs to Rain Lomas, the founder of, of, of LBH Bank, uh, LHV Bank. Unfortunately, he lost his keys and can't access these hundreds of millions. If you can help him recover it somehow, he's willing to split the, the return with you. Um, he says that unfortunately he can't access the keys. He really, wants to, um, he really wants to try and get it back if anybody can help him. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I've lost my private keys a few times in the beginning. I still actually am susceptible. Everyone is susceptible to losing their private keys. And when you lose your private keys, there's no way in. I was once helping a guy who had 3,000 Bitcoin on a Trezor wallet. Treasure or ledger, I can't remember which one it was. And he lost the, he lost the paper. Okay, now this is in the last bull market. I don't know if he's found it since. In fact, I don't think he has. He probably would have told me if he did. But that is money that's gone. It can never, ever, ever be recovered because you can't find your private keys. Simple, it's, it's, it's that simple. So the good news is that there actually is a solution. There actually is a solution to this. There are actually now wallets without private keys or they do have private keys, but you don't have to worry about the private keys. And... The reason, the reason why I'm saying this is one of our sponsors is Giddy. Giddy has solved this problem. And the way that they've solved this problem is that they shard or they, they break your private key into three parts. They keep one part encrypted. They can't access it. Your username keeps one part and your password keeps one part. So if you forget your password, you can just call on them and they will open the wallet for you with their shard because you need two of the three shards to open the wallet. So... If this worries you, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't sleep at night because of private keys and private key management, Giddy has got the solution for this. So go and check it out. Go and download the app. It's an amazing app. They've got DeFi farms and a whole lot of other stuff. Um, uh, um, and I think, that, I think it's really, really, really worth it to go and download this app, especially when I read this. Especially when I read this, I was thinking to myself, holy shit, like this is, imagine having $470 million dollars and not actually being able to, not being, not being able to access it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how tough that is? Man, that's crazy. Uh, the, the, one, the guy that I was helping is 3,000 Bitcoin. 3,000 Bitcoin today is 60, it's $100 million. Another $100 million gone, unless you can access the private keys. So listen, so go and check it out. Go and check out Giddy. Lastly, 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 so listen to this. Tonight is the first cohort of, the, the last free cohort of Sniper School that is free. Now, if you don't get in by tonight, that's cool because you can still get in in this week until the first workshop, which is next week. But after that, there's gonna be no more Sniper School cohorts. I really, really, really recommend that you try and get into this cohort. There is a link below to sign up. If you need any testimonials, just listen to these guys. These are real testimonials from real Before people Sniper in the School, I was just a regular dude, just a nine to five type guy. I worked construction. I've been in this market. I've, I've lost so much money. So I made a little bit of money and then you never think that it's ever going to stop running, right? Didn't diversify enough, had a lot in Luna. I pulled out $12,500 from my retirement. Today I've got 117,000, 17,290. My trading account that I used for Sniper School, I just put in the $250. And you know, now that's well over three grand. So, so I joined Sniper School, uh, $400 into a Mexican account. I can show you the account right now, it's at 130 k My life has changed thanks to crypto advancement. This class has just been amazing. I can't thank you enough. If you're in crypto and you follow crypto banter and you don't do crypto school, I don't know why you're bothering to even be in crypto. Okay, so look, it does say sign up today because I think you really do have to think about signing up if you want to sign up and sign up today. Let me show you what, what to do here. So you go here. You sign up, there is a sniper school link. Here we go. The one that says, learn how to trade crypto. Please can we move it to the top uh, for free? You click here and it will take you to this page over here. Now you don't have to do all the sign up, but there is an event tonight, which starts in about, not one, is it one hour? No, it's much later than one hour. 
if you miss this event, it's fine. This is just a welcome event. I'm going to be there. Sheldon's going to be there. But by next week, you have to be enrolled. So, um, and this is the last one, and it, it really does teach you how to trade. So listen, do it. Sign up today. This is the last free one we're going to ever have. From that point on, it's going to become $2,999. That's how it is. Um, uh, because, w w I mean, we've done this for a year for free. We can't just keep running it for free forever and ever and ever. Uh, it is life-changing. If you've done Sniper School, just let us know in the, in the chat. Let us know if it actually did change your life. Um, it's also where I learned how to trade. And in this Sniper School, I'm actually going to be there with you guys. We're going to be talking calls. We're going to be talking coins. Uh, and stuff like that. So if you if you are coming and if you do sign up, join the event tonight. Uh, if not, I'll see you guys at the event next week. Uh, let's we can look at the markets just before we go. We're still holding tight. We're still holding tight so far. And the bull the bullback hasn't really uh, hit us yet. The bullback hasn't really hit us yet. Um, I guess I'll see you guys again tomorrow, maybe with a more positive show. We won't be talking about pullbacks. Until then, trade well, my friends. <laughs>